Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about what else but where is the new Synology kit. I've already made a bunch of videos over the last few months but what I want to do with this video today is combine all the knowledge up to this point that we know and then to pull it all into this one video to share all this information we know so far and if I do miss anything that's in recent releases or since this video then do put it in the comments below and you know if there's any other delays coming up I'll obviously update it myself but Moving forward, let's talk about everything we know about the new generation of Synology hardware and indeed software to give us some idea about why things haven't arrived yet and when they are coming to a head and when we're going to get hold of them. First thing is, of course, DSM-7. It has been delayed. We talked about it a few weeks ago and on As Compares as well. We talked about how this uh, the new DSM platform, DSM-7, has now been pushed back to release towards the end of the year. There's still no confirmation if this is just a beta test uh, that's been pushed back or the full release. Um, and now... That's not great, but on the other hand, it's fantastic that at least it's going to get a bit more of a look at. It's still going to be optimized. I'd rather have a software platform that is ready to go than something that's unfinished. And if they need more time to get it perfect, fair play to them. I'm okay to wait. Maybe you disagree. There's the comments down there. But we talk about delays and stuff like that. I think it, you know, let's talk, discuss the elephant in the room. Let's talk about, of course, coronavirus. You must be sick of hearing the word by now, but there's no avoiding it. It is having a huge impact on the tech industry across all fields, not just in NAS, not just Synology, but everyone. Whether it's because uh, these companies with huge enterprises of construction and building and uh, just basically the production of devices like these out in the East, all of that is taking significant delayed hits. Whether that's because uh, manufacturing plants are shutting in advance to be preemptive to stop the spread of infection or because they've been forced to by local governments. I know there are no, a number of places in the world where laws have been passed banning uh, large collections of people in single locations and with offices sending people to work from home and forced quarantine periods as well as um, you know take for example IT partners here in March that was postponed because of uh, the French recent law that banned more than 5,000 people in a closed location um, things like that have played their part and it would not surprise me if that is one of the reasons why we've not seen so much kit come out of the Synology landscape in the 2020 series of disk station and rack station. I talk about the 2020 series, but of course some of them have arrived. The DS420J and the DS220J, these did arrive with us. And, you know, at least one of them was shown last year at some of the closing events of Synology's 2020 launch uh, at the end of 2019. But even the DS220J has been delayed in some regions for release. So we are seeing delays there on the release schedule of a number of items. Talking of items that, you know, we kind of thought we'd have by now, another one is, of course, the rack station, the RS1220 Plus. That was another NAS that I thought we would have had by now, but of course it's been delayed a little bit, but it is still very much on the horizon. <clears throat> but what are we going to see with this series? It would not surprise me if, if with Synology's naming convention being the way it is, that we're going to see more and more releases slip into the you know DSX21 series. One victim already is the DS1620XS, which has now been um, now officially DS1621XS. I've seen on a number of platforms, and that's from Synology themselves to a number of sources. So there's no avoiding it that we are seeing the effects of coronavirus, you know, on the release of new products and a number of brands. I think because of hardware shortages, potentially. No, you know that's not confirmed happening to a number of NAS brands. It's only it's you know it's no surprise that we're seeing a lot of that hardware slip into their Q3, Q4, which is July through to uh, December. So I do think we're going to see things a little bit quieter on the new release, at least release schedule, rather than just announcement and leaks. I talk about announcements and leaks, of course. I just came off the back of filming a video before this. Um, I got information about a new series of Synology branded SSDs. Now, you've got to take this information with a pinch of salt, because it does come from official sources, leaked unofficially, of course, but... You know, Synology have invested and looked into products in the past and then decided later on after a lot of research that they're just not suitable for release. One of the classic examples was the SG-1000. Um, now, this is a range of 2.5-inch SSDs in SATA and NVMe SSDs. Now, 
Why is this interesting? I'm glad you asked. Because Synology have always branched out to the accessories available with their device. Probably not as much as some other companies, but they certainly have had their own branded um, uh, uh, memory sticks inside, their own branded network interface card upgrades, and their own range of kind of direct connected accessories. But they've never looked at branding or at least rebadging you know, hard drives and SSD. This is quite an interesting move from them, and particularly with DSM-7's uh, vastly improved SSD caching techniques and that new algorithm that's going to be utilized to get that improved performance alongside that uh, combination 10 GPE and um, uh, SSD cache NVMe card upgrade that we talked about last year, the E10 M20 T1, or probably M21 by now, then that card and the improvement of NVMe within DSM-7 only underline the fact that if Synology was going to make the move into their own branded SSD so they can slap their badge on it and go, we certify this like we do with the memory, now would be a very good time to do that. And therefore, the idea of these uh, 2.5-inch SATA SSDs available in 480 gig, 960 gig, and 1.92 gig in the SATA, and at the moment, the only confirmed size of the NVMe is the 400, which again is a weird capacity, so hopefully that model number is just read wrong, then chances are that them moving into this area is probably quite logical, particularly on an enterprise level, where they've got lots of flash station devices out there that will utilize this media to a higher degree. Now, what more do we know at the moment about new Synology releases? Sadly, not a vast amount more than that. Um, generally, all the information I have had about new releases uh, given to me back in 2019 in the closing stages of November, December, has since changed and it is no longer confirmed. And I think what we're going to be looking at now is kind of a doubling down on the existing range from Synology and maybe we'll see some more information out of Taiwan you know, in May, maybe June, towards the end of Q2, we're going to have to see how corona and um, hardware shortages affect that new release schedule. Now, what about what we think is going to come? Now, from this point on, we are talking complete speculation. So if you don't want to hear speculation, end the video, disappear. I don't blame you. But today I want to talk about speculation from this point onwards. Looking at release schedules, we're going to get some new disk station devices. Why we haven't yet stuns me, but maybe they've missed a window that they should have gone for. Who knows? Maybe the success of the you know the 918 and the 218 and stuff like that was just too good. But I do think we are going to see a follow-up, the 921. And of course, we're going to see a new 2-bay out of them, but it's almost certainly going to be a 2021 series at this point with a release schedule towards the end of the summer or maybe even early autumn, which is terrible to hear, isn't it? But on top of that, you've got other ranges which are either long overdue an upgrade or by their family release schedule will likely have an upgrade. Of course, the DS1821 Plus is a good example. Uh, the 8-bay series from then has had a two-year gap each time from the, um, the 11 to the 13 to the 15 to the 17 to the 1819. So a DS1821 going by family logic is pretty likely, but of course... One often remarked item that we've still never seen a direct follow-up for is the DS3617XS, showing its age a little bit now with um, in terms of its chassis design and the PCIe inside. It's still a great NAS. It's good for VMs and uh, Plex and surveillance and more, but it is showing its age. Whether the direct follow-up to this is that 1621XS we talked about earlier on, which would be disheartening, I would have assumed that was a follow-up to the DS3018XS. Super people remember model names, apparently. But I really hope that we see a more powerhouse 12-bay from Synology. And the last thing I want to talk about that I think, is, again, purely speculation, is to do with the utilisation of Wi-Fi 6. I've talked about it before, but Synology's router series, the MR2200 um, AC mesh router system and the RT1900 and 2600 AC were very, very successful product family lines. And I do think they are due a Wi-Fi 6 entry. And, you know, maybe it'll be an MR2200 AX or a 2600 AX or 3600 or 3200 AX, who knows? But I think looking at the way Synology develops as a brand within their products family lines, I do think an AX follow-up is particularly likely. 
Whether we see it this year, I do think that's highly unlikely. Every time we've ever seen an announcement, an announcement of the Router series from Synology, the announcement and the release has always been catastrophically long, something like 10 to 12 months on each of those ranges. But who's to say? I will let you guys know if any new information arrives, and I, of course, will update in the comments below as well, as well as update things both on NAS Compares and, of course, Span.com. If you've got any questions or any follow-up to the information I've got here, then do let me know in the comments, but do go to the links in the description where hopefully I've detailed a lot of the evidence uh, behind a lot of the comments I've spoken about today. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing how things move forward, particularly if we're going to see some 2.5 GBE NAS in the future, just like the DS1620 slash 21XS we talked about last year, but we shall see. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll keep you informed of updates as and when they happen, and I will see you next time.